Doamnelor și domnilor, bun găsit și bine ați revenit la o nouă ediție a emisiunii Vestea Bună pentru Toți. Eu sunt Cătălin Berăscu și îl am alături de mine încă o dată pe domnul pastor și misionar Rick Godet. Pastor Godet, welcome to the program again. Thank you, it's good to be back. It's Christmas time. Yes. And uh, you are in a special position <laughs> of having experienced Christmas both in the UN United States and in Europe, in Germany, in Austria, in Romania, yes. in Ukraine, in uh, Moldova. Uh, what do you think that is something that characterizes all the peoples we uh, are talking about, yes. about Christmas? Yes. Well, I have been in Austria for 50 years, that's 50 Christmases, and I haven't been to many places in Europe at Christmas time. It's a very uh, wonderful time of the year for family, and that is something that is international. You have, you have families getting together in Austria, in Germany, probably here in Romania, and in the United States, family is big at Christmas time. And uh, we celebrate, and we have taken on some of, the, some of the customs of the Austrian people, but uh, Christmas is just wonderful in every country. Uh, we usually associate Christmas with rejoicing. Yes. We also think about family, when we uh, celebrate Christmas, so that Christmas is somehow a celebration of rejoicing and of family. Yes. Um, is it something that all the people have uh, in common? I mean, do they find, do they place a special emphasis on family and rejoicing? Yes. Uh, Christmas time is the time for rejoicing. It's a time of joy. It's a time of, of just happy time, happiness. And uh, yes, the word Christmas uh, generates in my life happiness because I enjoy making other people happy. I enjoy giving Christmas presents and seeing children's faces light up uh, Christmas is a happy time in the, of the year. Indeed it is. And uh, we come now to maybe a deeper level of uh, the conversation because uh, we try to identify the reason of our rejoicing. What do people rejoice and what should they rejoice about? Yes. Um, salvation happened at Christmas time. Uh, God so loved this world that he gave the world a gift. And the gift is his son, Jesus. And Jesus brought with him salvation. Salvation from what, you might ask? Salvation from damnation, salvation from hell. And hell is a real place and uh, it's a place that, that most people just don't understand uh, how horrible it is. And Jesus brought salvation, life, into our world. We should rejoice in our salvation is your message. Yes. Somehow, media is also eager to remind us about Christmas. <laughs> and they do it... Uh, very soon, starting with the uh, first of December, yeah. uh, they already remind us that it is Christmas time. Yeah. And uh, if I'm to borrow some uh, uh, description of today's uh, gods which operate in our society, yeah. they would be entertainment and marketing. People seem to rejoice rather in being entertained and partying uh, rather than in their salvation. Yes. People tend to rejoice uh, rather in buying things yeah. than in um, their salvation. How would you characterize our society, our culture, uh, especially with regard 
to uh, these two gods, entertainment and marketing. Yes. The Bible tells us that uh, there are idols in the world. And one thing an idol cannot do, an idol cannot give you love. Only God gives love. And people nowadays, they're so captivated by by cars, by by iPhones, by all the, the things that the world is trying to sell. But God does not sell love. He gives love. And that is something that the world, that people in the world do not understand. They, they have a longing for love, but look for it in different places. They look for it in entertainment. They look for it in food. They look for it in, in things that the world offers. But only God can offer true love. And that is something that I, that you, that everybody watching needs. They need to experience the love that God can give them. I agree. I totally agree. Uh, does it mean that maybe people today tend to miss the true meaning of their rejoicing? Well, some do, some don't. But uh, when you have, when you have uh, things, things can never substitute God. God created us. He loved Adam and Eve in the beginning, and he loves every person that lives on this world. And he can give you life. He can give you eternal life. He can give you real joy. And these are things that, I mean, everybody buys things, and we go to the store, and we, f we fill our, our uh, shopping cart full of things, and what happens is these things get old. And when they get old, then we throw them away. But you can never substitute this for God. God will give you love, and it'll give you the same love every day. Material things uh, are enjoyable. But yes. you, s you seem to place a special emphasis on spiritual things. The birth of our Lord Jesus Christ means that uh, he brought us salvation the deep the meaningful reason of our rejoicing should be our salvation yes but the point we may be missing is that joy happiness in this context comes only after sadness because the question is what do we need to be to be saved from so that we should enjoy our salvation salvation from what salvation from death. Um, Jesus came into the world for the only purpose to die. When we, when we see the nativity scene, we see a baby Jesus. But that baby had to grow up and become a man and take on the sin of the entire world. And so he died on my, in my place, he suffered all the crucifixion and all the, the, the whippings that Jesus endured. He endured because I was supposed to be that criminal dying, but he took it because I couldn't. And Jesus took on, he took on flesh, the word became flesh, and Jesus brought into the world Light. Light is the element that is, is here to produce life. Without light, there's no life. And so light came into the world. And Jesus said, if you want to be saved, if you, if you want to experience salvation, if you want to experience eternal life, you must come to the light. Now, what happens when you go to the light? Light reveals, and it reveals all your sin. It reveals how bad you really are. And 
Jesus said, you've got to come. You've got to come to the light, and the light will reveal your sinfulness. And then when you say, I repent of my sin, Jesus will give you life, and the life is everlasting. So the Christmas joy is only the, the end of the story, and maybe only for some, for those who realize what their true fallen spiritual condition is. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, sin, you mentioned death, and you mentioned salvation precisely from sin and death. How do we approach our sinfulness? Hmm. You have to. I, of course, you also you mentioned repentance. Yes. But should we emphasize it? Should we place? Yes. A, a, yes. The Bible emphasizes it as well. The Bible says you have to come and you have to acknowledge the truth that you are a sinner and in that when you do that you open up your heart to God God says all right I will justify you because of Jesus now I can't get up on the cross and die for my own sins Jesus had to do that and if I do that if I come to the light let my sins be exposed by the Word of God then I become saved. That is true salvation. First sadness, first awareness uh, that I am a sinner, the cruel realization of the fact that death is what I truly deserve, and then after admitting that, after repenting, I can truly enjoy the message of Christmas which is I have a Savior yes and salvation is from sin from death yes and that is the true meaning of Christmas yes but I don't yes okay go on. I don't celebrate Christmas like the world like like Christmas trees like like lights uh, all these things that light up uh, the world at this time of, of the year, I celebrate Christmas because I am happy that I am saved, that salvation has finally come to my life. We have Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. It may be impressive, especially in big cities, yes. with lots of lights and glamour and noise and agitation. We have material things, they are useful, they can bring certain type of contentment. Yes. And yet the Bible and your message uh, based upon the Bible is that we should rather enjoy the meaningful things, the relationship we have with our Lord. Yes. Why don't we make a parallel between Christmas as a family celebration and invite our viewers to also experience the family, family relationships but on the spiritual level, meaning why don't we have God as our Father yes. and Lord Jesus as our brother yes. uh, and the fellow believers being our brothers and sisters. Yes. What do you think about this spiritual family how would you describe it does it bring uh, real meaningful deep joy yes um, I can only say what I have experienced I have a, a family mm -hmm. and when our children were small we would sit around every Christmas Eve the night before Christmas and we would go through the passages that speak about the birth of Christ. And uh, we would try to explain to our children that this is why we celebrate, because Jesus is salvation. Jesus has come to give you everlasting life. Then 
we go to bed, the next morning we wake up and celebrate uh, by giving gifts out. Jesus was the greatest gift that God could ever give to mankind. And I rejoice in, like I said, making people happy by giving them uh, things that make them happy, uh, joyous, a joyous time, eating together, telling stories. Uh, but we cannot forget that Christmas is celebrated because God gave his son. I see. How about those uh, relationship with strangers? I mean, people we don't know, but people we share the same faith, faith with, with uh, how do we relate to them? Do, does this kind of relationship in the church, in the community, bring us happiness as well? It can. Um, we are a member of a church in Germany, and I love to go to church and see all the people, all my brothers, all my sisters in Christ, and uh, we have a happy time this time at Christmas. We have it in the family, and then we have it in the church, and it, it's absolutely wonderful. So we invite our viewers to enjoy Christmas both in their family yes. and uh, in their spiritual family, to yes. come and belong to a, a Most spiritual definitely, family. Yes. But our Lord has uh, competition. <laughs> uh, I asked a boy, a young boy, a child, who he loves more, Lord Jesus or Santa Claus? And he said, Santa Claus. Of course, I asked why. And uh, his answer was, because he gives me gifts. Mm -hmm. What would you tell this kid? Well, I would start with the parents. The parents must inform their children that Jesus is the reason for Christmas, not Santa Claus. And if you train up a child uh, when, when the child is young and you explain to him that Jesus is the reason for the season uh, and, and these other things like Santa Claus and, and uh, Christmas uh, stockings and, and Christmas wishes and all these other things, they're secondary. And, uh, yeah. I see. That's it. Domnilor și domnilor, luăm o scurtă pauză publicitară după care vom reveni. Domnilor și domnilor, am revenit la discuția noastră despre motivul venirii Domnului nostru Isus Hristos în lume. Sărbătorim de Crăciun nașterea Lui și am constatat că bucuria este cea pe care o asociem cu Crăciunul. Am văzut însă că această bucurie este doar sfârșitul poveștii și am constatat că începutul poveștii este cel care de fapt creează și contextul care ne ajută să identificăm adevărata esență a bucuriei de Crăciun. Am văzut că, din păcate, după mărturia Scripturii, noi suntem oameni păcătoși, că suntem sub condamnarea lui Dumnezeu, că moartea este plata păcatului și avem nevoie disperată de salvare. Tocmai acesta este motivul venirii Domnului nostru Isus Hristos în lume. De Crăciun așadar, sărbătorim venirea Mântuitorului, a Salvatorului, a Celui care poate înlătura și pedeapsa păcatului, poate aduce și învierea din morți, ne poate oferi viața veșnică. Așa că, dincolo de distracție, dincolo de marketing, dincolo de bucuria pe care ne aduc lucrurile materiale, adevărata bucurie este cea spirituală și că relația noastră mântuitoare cu pruncul Isus este cea care dă adevărata valoare a bucuriei noastre. Că fiind alături de familia noastră, putem de asemenea să ne bucurăm de familia spirituală, alături de cei care împărtășesc aceeași credință cu noi. 
Continuăm discuția noastră și vom medita în continuare la semnificația Crăciunului, adică vom vorbi despre nașterea Domnului nostru Isus Hristos, alături de invitatul meu, pastorul Rick Godet. Pastor Godet, we continue our conversation. What is a particular episode that comes to your mind when uh, you think about our Lord's birth? Well, after Jesus was born, eight days later, he was brought up to the temple, and in the temple, Mary went through pur uh, purification rites, and they were leaving the temple and ran into a man called Simeon. And the Bible says he was righteous, He did what was right. He did what was right in God's eyes. He was devout, which means he studied the scriptures, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the consolation of Israel was Jesus. And Simeon was an old, old man. And the Holy Spirit had revealed to Simeon that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah. The Messiah was the Old Testament prophesied there would be coming a Messiah, a, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for in English? Uh, the he anointed was one? Anointed. He was anointed. And moved by the Spirit of God, the old man, Simeon, was walking toward the temple and Jesus was coming with his mother Mary out of the temple and there they met Jesus. And Simeon took the baby Jesus in his arms and he turned to God and he prayed and I'd like to read what he said. He said, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, and the Messiah was promised to the Jews, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Uh, for my eyes have seen salvation. And Simeon, the Holy Spirit kept Simeon alive until Jesus came out of the temple, eight days old, and Simeon took him in his arms and he says, now I can finally die because my eyes have seen your salvation. And this Jesus became uh, light for the nations. He became the glory of Israel because the scriptures say that salvation comes from the Jews. And finally, finally, after all these years, Simeon is holding the baby Jesus. He's holding salvation. May I ask you a personal question? Certainly. Um, Simeon, Simon was an old man. And last time we were together, you also mentioned you were an old man. <laughs> Does his saying that he can die peacefully because he saw God's salvation has have any particular significance for yourself? Well, well yes. <laughs> I, I, I can die. I mean, Jesus said that we will die. Our bodies will, will die, but our spirit will continue to live. And that is, uh, that is what, what, what gives us real joy. I know that someday this body is going to die, but I know that this spirit is going to live forever and ever with God with Jesus. Uh, allow me to, to stay a little bit longer uh, here because lately I have received some uh, ter terribly bad news about some of my relatives and close friends and the bad news is called cancer Yes. and it is uh, about uh, three or four persons Uh, who uh, 
unfortunately uh, received uh, have received uh, this uh, horrible news yet simon was ready to die you said you are ready to die without making death insignificant do we still have power and hope to face death yes we do um, last year I lost my mother she was 91 and she died last year I went to her funeral and I looked in the casket and there was a body in the casket and I knew the minute I looked at her that that was not my mother that was a a body uh, God said that your body will get old you won't be able to do the things you did when you were younger it will get old and old and old and finally it will die and we see in I saw in my mother's death the passing of the body went to the ground but the spirit went to God and I knew in that moment when I looked into the casket that that was no longer my mother my mother was in glory with Jesus do you believe in resurrection yes I most certainly believe in the resurrection God has created our bodies uh, when he when he began creation uh, the Bible tells us in in the book of Philippians that Jesus formed Adam and he formed Adam out of dirt out of earth and there was something missing after he had created Adam there was something missing in Adam and that was life that was uh, that was his, just it was his life. life so yes it was, he, he he created a body but the body didn't have a life and so the Bible says that he breathed into Adam and Adam became a living soul and God loves he loves me he loves you he, we look the way we look because God created us that way uh, God has a nose he's not it's not like my nose but he smells God has eyes and he sees God has ears and he hears God has a mouth and he speaks and when he created Adam he created man he said I'm going to give him a head I'm going to give him arms I'm going to give him legs I'm going to give him knees I'm going to give him a back side so he can sit the Bible says God sits in heaven and so he made us so we can sit uh, God walks to and fro and he can see everything because he has these eternal heavenly eyes and he gave us eyes and he made us to walk and uh, we are who we are because we were made after the image of God we have bodies which unfortunately are mortal bodies what is the final destiny of our bodies as believers well the Bible says that when we are buried there will come a day when a trumpet will sound in heaven the graves will open up and for some reason God loves the body and so he'll take the body out of the ground all those who trusted in his son Jesus all those people who have everlasting life and he will take their bodies to heaven he will then change their bodies so that we are like Jesus and we will be once again reunited with the soul and we will live with him forever and ever I see so uh, 
if we are to speak about the whole story of the Bible, we cannot separate Christmas from Easter. Christmas is, uh, is somehow connected to Lord Jesus' death and his resurrection. Actually, he came uh, in our world on Christmas so that he could die on Easter and then uh, being uh, risen from the dead. Yes. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, tells us uh, there is a conversation between God Father and God Son, Jesus. And God the Father said to the Son, I am preparing a body for you. To and go into this world on yes, Christmas. Yes, I am preparing a body for you, and you will be my son, I will be your father. And that body came in Bethlehem. That body was Jesus. And Jesus grew up, and then he went to the cross, and the purpose for him going for, to the cross was to pay the penalty of sin, which he did. And when he was placed into the ground, he said, I will be like Jonah. After three days, I will raise from the dead, and I will go back to my father. And uh, that's exactly what he did. Now Jesus is going to come again. Mm -hmm. When he comes again, just like the first time he came, but he won't come to die on the cross because that's already taken place. The book of Hebrews says he's coming back to judge. And you don't want to be uh, you don't want to be on, on the bad side of Jesus when he comes back because he will judge, he will rule, and he will pro he will fulfill his promise to Israel. He will fulfill his promise to his church and we will live forever then. I see. The one who came uh, for Christmas, on Christmas Day, is Lord Jesus, which you called, whom you called Messiah. Yes. The Christ, the Anointed One. Yes. Unsul in Romanian. Yes. And um, we know that in the Old Testament, there were uh, three categories of people who were anointed. Uh, the first one, the first category of uh, people anointed were the prophets. Yeah. Does it mean that the anointed one, uh, Messiah, was God's prophet? He certainly was God's prophet. And what does it mean that he was God's prophet? Well, Jesus spoke concerning the future, just like the prophets did in the Old Testament. They, God would give them a message. For instance, God told, God told Jonah. Jonah, you go to Nineveh because I am going to judge Nineveh. Nineveh. And Jesus brought the, the prophecy of future times when he would come again, when he would reign for a thousand years and give his people, uh, fulfill his promises to his people. And Jesus was probably the greatest of all the prophets. Can we also generalize and say that a prophet of God speaks the word of God, not uh, particularly uh, the words connected to future? Yes. Uh, prophets basically told what God wanted them to tell. So if we want to know what God wants to tell us, we should listen to the, the anointed one, the, the anointed prophet, to yes. our Lord Jesus Christ. Re that's correct, yes. Um, one of the reasons Jesus came was to fill up the Old Testament, mm -hmm. to fulfill it, to uh, make, make uh, the people listen to what God, he was the, the best messenger that God ever sent to mankind. And Jesus would, would preach, he would teach, he would tell people this is going to happen, and it happened. He fulfilled the law, he fulfilled the Old Testament in every possible way. I see. Another category of people who were anointed under the Old Testament were the priests. Does it mean that our Lord is the true priest of God? Yes. And what does it 
mean for us? Well, a priest had the responsibility of bringing a sacrifice. And uh, in the Old Testament, when you brought a sacrifice, you laid your hands on the, the animal that you brought, and that animal was then killed. The Old Testament is full of uh, a, a brutal, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I want to say it was a butcher, butcher shop, mm -hmm. the Old Testament, because all these animals were sacrificed and presented by the priest to be uh, offered for, for people's sin. And the book of Hebrews also tells us that God said, no more sacrifices. I, I'm not happy with, with lambs. I'm not happy with the red heifer. I'm not happy with doves. They, they can't take away sin. But when Jesus came into the world, he came as a high priest, mm -hmm. and he offered himself as a sacrifice. And people can accept it or they can reject it, but he is a great high priest. And what is peculiar about our Lord is that he's both the high priest and the sacrifice. Yes. Uh, he is the one who brought himself uh, as a sacrifice. Right. And can we then think of all the sacrifices in the Old Testament as uh, pointing fingers to the true sacrifice which was going to to come? Yes, this was promised in the Old Testament as well. Um, and if you were, were a devout Jewish person, you understood the true meaning of sacrifice and that the Messiah would one day come and be the final, the perfect sacrifice. And so they put their, we, we look back at Jesus, we look back at Christmas, we look back at Easter, and they in the Old Testament looked forward to Christmas, looked forward to the coming of the Messiah. And Jesus finally came. Uh, the Christian creed says uh, in Romanian, cu moartea pe moarte călcând, which means that he destroyed death by death. Yes. Uh, and the high priest, who is also the true sacrifice, is the one who brought life uh, through his death, which is uh, the true meaning of uh, Christmas and of the gospel. Yes. Now, uh, moving forward, a uh, third category of people who were anointed under the Old Testament were the kings. Does it also mean that our our Lord is the king? It certainly does. Uh, Jesus promised, he promised the Israel, the nation of Israel, he promised to make them a great nation, and he promised to uh, a, a great nation, and he was going to give them this all this land in Israel in Palestine and when he returns the second time we celebrate his birthday it's a good thing to celebrate Jesus birthday but it's also a good thing to look forward to his second coming and he will come as the king of kings and he will fulfill the promises made to Israel he will give, make them a great nation. He will make them the capital of the world. And everybody will be blessed. Everybody will be blessed through him. By, by Israel, by the king. And he will rule, the Bible says he will rule for 1,000 years. Mm -hmm. Okay? And in that time, he will, he will rule with an iron fist, which means he will not put up with, with disobedience. He will not put up with war. He will take all the cannons, all the tanks, all the, the mechanisms of war, and he will melt them down and make 
uh, plows with them. Because he's the Lord of Peace. He's the Lord of Peace. What is the proper attitude humans should have in front of a king? In they front should, of the King of Kings. They should bow down and worship. Jesus will promise perfect peace and there'll be no nations raising up, rising up against against the other nation. There'll be no Putin wanting to invade uh, Ukraine. No, it will be peace on earth. I see. At the end of our program, would you please send a message to our viewers? What is your message to the one who uh, followed us so far? Well, salvation is here. Jesus brought salvation into this world. And you, if you want to be, if you want to experience salvation, you must receive Jesus. And that's basically what I would like to share with with people, uh, salvation is offered to every man. Doesn't matter if you're from Romania, if you're from Moldova, if you're from uh, United States, if you're from England, salvation is for people. And people can respond, should respond. God has created us with a, with a free will. Can I listen to Jesus? Yes. Must I listen to Jesus? That's up to you. If you want to listen to Jesus and become saved, you can do that. Doamnelor și domnilor, am ajuns la final. Îi mulțumesc din nou invitatului meu pentru bunăvoința de a ne fi însoțit. Vă mulțumesc și dumneavoastră pentru bunăvoința de a ne fi urmărit până la final. Vă reamintesc că ne puteți urmări în fiecare sâmbătă și duminică, începând cu orele 19. De asemenea, ne puteți urmări și pe Facebook și pe YouTube. Ca întotdeauna, vă îndemnăm și vă încurajăm. Apropiați-vă de Dumnezeu și El se va apropia de voi. O seară binecuvântată și Crăciun fericit. Domnul să vă binecuvânteze!